friends. It's Sharon from Mad Paper Crush here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to the forerunner to the holidays. It is getting to that time where we're probably thinking about the holidays coming up and I thought it would be really fun to make a little Christmas list folio that you see here. So as I go into the holidays, I want to keep track of the gifts I want to get for people, the people I need to get gifts for, my receipts, all that kind of good stuff I thought would be fun to kind of keep together in this little Christmas list folio. Now the fun part about this is we're going to be just using one piece of paper as our background and then we're just going to decorate it with some decorative pages that are Christmassy. So I love that it has this little tie on it so it makes it you know a little bit harder for prying eyes to get in there <laughs> so you can keep your gifts secret and I hope that you know it's a size that you could fit it right into a purse or a bag or something where you um, can take it with you as you're doing your Christmas shopping. All right so let's just take a quick little look at it. So on the inside here, I tried to leave some spaces for you to write things. I thought this might be a fun place to keep a list of all the people that you need to purchase gifts for. I know that if I don't do that, I inevitably am running around a couple days before Christmas trying to <laughs> get those things that I forgot. And then um, there is a tuck spot here where you could tuck some things into there. There's one little signature here. It's, it's not that many pages, but it should be enough and give you enough space to keep track of um, things that you're doing or maybe even write down some memories. Um, I do have a freebie for you, and I will be talking about that more as we get into this, but pay attention. I will try to put some times down in the list below so you can get your freebie pages for this as well. I have lots of inspiration pages in here, places for you to, um, I mean, I even when I'm just doing something for the holidays, I like to have something that inspires me. So having Christmas looking pages, even if I can't write on them, I think it makes it um, more fun for me to, you know, get into this and use it for things. So we'll be talking about those freebies when we get into that part of it. And then in the back part here, I have two little um, tags that, I put in just to kind of hold my place, but we have a stacked pocket back here where you could keep receipts or your budgeting or different things like that in here. So there's lots of places for you to stash some stuff if you would like when you're doing your Christmas shopping, as well as keep all your list and possibly use it for some planning and things as well. So let's go ahead and get started and make this Christmas list folio. All right, the base of my folio is going to be this 12 by 12 piece of um, scrapbook paper. Now, this listed on the paper pack says that it's um, a cardstock, but it, you can see it is kind of a flimsy cardstock, but this will still add some extra weight. I don't think I'd want to start with a copy paper or a copy weight paper um, to start with. I think I want to start with something a little bit heavier than that. If you have heavier cardstock and want to use that, that's perfectly fine. You can use that too. I'm hoping that as I start to embellish this and add layers to it, it'll give it, you know, enough sturdiness and strength, um, you know, that I want. So I chose a piece of cardstock. Not a lot of this is going to be shown. Um, so if you find something that has great edges, <laughs> you can use that. Um, so if if you have some scrap paper, maybe that you're, you know, scrap, scrapbook, scrap paper that you don't really care for, but it has, you know, decent edges, you can go ahead and use that. I'm picking this one because it has nice brown edges. Obviously, this is a solid color paper, um, but I think this will be a good, good base for us to get started with. And this is double-sided in color, um, so you might want to think about that with patterns, but you certainly don't need to do that. You could just add some distress ink or um, even leave it plain if you didn't want to do that. So just pick a piece of paper that, you know, you like. Now, the next thing we're going to do is just cut it down to size. Um, 12 by 12, believe it or not, is a little bit big. So I'm going to cut this down to 11 and a half. Or no, I think I'm going to cut it down to, yeah, 11 and a half. So I'm just going to take a half an inch off of one side. Okay, so this is the width of our folio. And then I'm going to cut it down to the height that I want. And since the papers I'm going to be using are eight and a half um, by 11, I think I'm going to cut it down to eight and a half. But certainly you could do whatever size, you know, you would like your folio to be. So we'll hang on to this just in case we want to use that for something else. But this is going to be the base of our folio. 
Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to make some marks on this, some score marks, so we know where our fold lines are going to be. So if you line it up in your zero corner here, you can see I have 11 and a half, the width of my folio there. I'm gonna first mark it at four and one eighth inches. So I'm making my first score mark there. Whoops, and that didn't want to stay on track, but there we go. And then my next one is going to be another four and an eighth of an inch from here. So if I go up to eight and a quarter, that's where my next one is going to be. And then since this is the flap, I want this to have a little bit of space so that it folds over easier on top of our little booklet. So this is where we'll be sewing in our signature, and then this will be the flap on this side. So from the eight and a quarter, we wanna go one more eighth of an inch over to eight and three quarters and make, whoops, make a mark there. And boy, this paper really doesn't want to cooperate. But, the good thing is I'm going to be adding stuff on top of that, so it doesn't matter. So you want to have your score marks four and an eighth, eight and a, eight and a quarter, and then eight and three eighths. That's what we're going to do there. So now the base of our folio is all done, except for the folding. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold my flap over first on both of these score marks. So you just kind of have to take your time so that you get both of these folded over where you want them. It looks like I almost went through on one of those scores, so don't do what I did. And the second one sometimes is a little bit harder since it's so close to the first one. So I'm just going to take my time and get that folded down so I have a little bit of um, a space there. You can see that. So that'll give us some space when we're folding our flap over. And then our other piece just gets folded in just like that. And so here's the base of our folio. All right, now before we do anything else, I, there is something I do wanna do to this paper and this is entirely optional, it's up to you. But when I cut this paper down, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but my cut edges show the white paper in between. And I don't like that <laughs> all the time. So I'm just gonna take my Distress Oxide that I have, this is Vintage Photo, and I'm just going to rub it along these edges and let that dry. Um, so you can see, hopefully you can see, actually, let me do a half of one. So I'll do this half of here. And I don't know if you can see the difference, but this one matches the, the paper color and this one, you know, it's kind of white there. So that's all I'm trying to do is hide those white edges so that I don't have to see them. I like it to look, um, a little bit more cohesive on the edges. So that's all I'm going to do around here. And then the other thing that I did was I pulled out my, um, the paper that I'm going to use to cover everything. And this is actually my Holly and Ivy digital kit, which I will link down below and up in the corner if you're interested in taking a look at this um, kit. I love this is kind of like a um, collage kit. Um, it has lots of different Christmassy feeling papers to it, greens and reds, some fun Christmas um, postcards and decorations and things like that. So if you'd like to check out that kit to use that as well, you can certainly do that. This is what I'm going to use. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to cover the outside. So um, I see where I kind of went through. I am going to just add some distress, whoops, to my finger, <laughs> apparently. There we go. I'm just going to cover up some of those marks a little bit so that they're um, not as noticeable. And this one too, although we are probably going to be using some fabric to reinforce these um, folds and creases uh, at the end. So, all right, so now we need to, we're going to cover our outside cover. So, since this is my fold, this side is the outside cover, this side is the outside cover, and this is the outside cover. So I'm going to go through my papers here and choose papers that I want to put in each of these um, locations on the outside. And since I did eight and a half as the height, you can see that these papers will match that uh, very well. And so the other thing that I might do 
is I might even piece together some papers so that they are cohesive. So maybe just, you know, cut down here so we have like this, um, and then maybe cut over here. I don't know yet because this is a little bit longer. We might do something on the third side, but I'm just going to kind of go through what I have here and pick out those papers and then we'll check it out. Okay, I picked the pieces that I want for the cover. And I did just want to mention that I did take um, sort of special care to these two pages. Because they are going to go on top of each other, I just want to be sure I'm, you know, I like the configuration in the end. And so what I found was I really love this page on this side because I love these letters um, and I like this wallpaper. So I thought this would, and this is also sort of going to be my real cover because this is what you'll see the most of. So I like this, you know, as the thing that I'm going to put on the very top. And then I just wanted to be sure that whatever I put underneath here, I mean, there's not much showing, um, but I wanted it to be, you know, something that I like together with this front. And so when I put this one in here, um, I liked the way this looked. So you're going to still be able to see, I mean, it's going to go around a little bit here, but you're still going to get a little bit of this. But when you open it up, um, you'll get to see the full postcard here that's right in there. And I like that. So I think what I'm going to do is for these back two um, covers, I'm going to use this for both of them. So I'll show you what I mean when we cut them down. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I'm going to cut them down. I like to have a little bit of a border. So I am going to be cutting off some of these pages. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to line this up. And actually, I don't know if you can see that real well. So I'm going to open this up. This is my front flap, which is the smaller flap here. And I'm going to put the paper down on the border that I want to have. I'm going to leave this bottom border on and then cut some of this top border off. So to do that, I need to kind of see where my fold is and I can kind of see it here. And I'm just going to mark it about an eighth of an inch in. I'm not going to um, fuss over the actual measurements, but this is where I'm gonna cut this down so I know I'll have a little bit of a border on all sides then. And same with the top. So you can see the top of my sheet is here and actually I'll just move this over so you can see it a little bit better. So I have the border that I want down here, and then I'm just going to mark this at about an eighth of an inch down from my brown backer paper there. So when I cut this down, oops, that's not my cutter, you'll be able to see a border all the way around the paper. And of course, I'm going to save these papers in case there's, you know, anything else that I want to do with them as we continue to create um, on the inside here. So let's just take a look at this and make sure this is doing what I want it to do here. So when I glue this down, you can see that I'll have a little bit of a border around each side there, which is what I wanted to do. Um, and I may even end up cutting just a little bit more off because I think maybe I made my mark based on the further edge <laughs> of the paper, not necessarily the, the first fold, which is what I want. So I might cut that down just a little bit more. But then for the back pages, I'm going to do the exact same thing, except I'm going to cut them one at a time in succession so that when I put them together on these back pages, it'll be the full page that you see here, which is kind of what I want as well. So I'm going to cut them one at a time, grab my pencil here. I'm going to start by making my border from the, the right edge of this. And I, here's my fold, so I'm going to come in about an eighth of an inch there. And then the same thing I'm going to do, um, yeah, I think I'm going to cut off the bottom of this one. So I'm going to mark that. This is the border I want at the top, and then come down to the bottom here and mark about an eighth of an inch in from the back paper. So when I cut this down, and I'm going to cut them each time. The first thing I'm gonna do is cut the bottom off so that they both match um, on the bottoms and I won't have to worry about that. So let me see if I can line this up. Make sure my thing is straight. So now both of my cuts will be lined up, but then I'm gonna cut the first one and then measure and then cut the second one so that they'll match. Whoops, and you have to make sure they you got it right on your cutter here. Okay, so I've cut my first one. 
And you can see how this one's going to go. It's gonna go right here like that. And then I'm going to measure and cut my second one so that my fold is uncovered here, but I have the matching pages next to each other, okay? So I've lost my pencil again. Oh no, here it is. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that and then we'll be right back. All right, all my pieces are cut and I decided I wanted to add one more feature to my cover before I get everything going. I wanted to add some rounded edges. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna move these over for a minute and then take my base again and I'm just gonna add some rounded edges. I'm trying to decide how round I want them. Let's see, maybe this round. And we'll just add just to the four corners to give it a little bit of a finished look here. Okay, so I like that much better there. Kind of looks like a little folio now. And then the other thing that I wanna do is I'm going to make sure I round the corners of these pages that I put in as well. So um, I'm just gonna put them down <laughs> on the, the um, piece itself, on the cover itself, because I don't want to round the wrong corners, <laughs> which, you know, I would do in a heartbeat. So let's go ahead and oops, put these in here so that my rounded edges match my rounded edges on the other one. Now this one uh, in the middle here doesn't, won't have any, so I don't have to worry about that one. But this one I wanna be sure once again that I'm rounding the correct corners and that'll be these two over here. And obviously this is just, this is just optional. And probably what I'll do with all of these pages too is I'll go over them with some distress ink um, to kind of finish them off, just kind of how I did with the base piece as well. And then the other thing that I'm going to do, but I'm going to do it off camera, is I'm going to sew around each of these pieces before I glue them down, um, just to add a little bit of stability and a little bit of interest. So I'm gonna do that and I'll be right back. Okay, you can see I have each of my pieces sewn and I like to use a zigzag stitch all the way around the outside of each piece so that it's ready to go. And I did that to each one individually. And as you can tell, I have not glued them down yet and I'm going to wait to glue them down because I think I'm going to add some things to the cover, um, some fabric and things to the cover before I do that. So these are ready to go, but we're not gonna glue them down yet. I'm just going to kind of put them aside. Now for the inside, we're going to do something very similar to the outside. So what I've done to start is I went ahead and cut three pieces for the inside. I used the same um, procedure that I did for the outside. So I have my inside piece for here. I have my middle piece here and I have my um, left piece here. So um, because I kind of know where I'm going to put pockets and things, I chose my pieces based on that. So on my left side here, I want to have a pocket in the lower left hand corner. So I wanted to have a nice picture or something in the top so that it would be shown. And I love this um, vintage postcard here that says a happy Christmas. So I'm going to use that for um, the top and this left side. Now for this middle page, I'm going to be putting a double pockets in here. I thought it would be perfect to put some receipts or um, different things like that in it in for your Christmas list in there. And so I I chose a piece that once again had some more interest at the top than it did at the bottom so that it would, you know, kind of have, you could have some fun with what was going on up here. Now for this piece, I thought it would be fun because this is so small, there's not too much I can do with it, but I thought it would be fun to have a little place where you could put a list. So a list of the, you know, names of people that you're shopping for and things like that. I know for me, I always, you know, forget people, and I want to be sure I have them on my list so I don't forget them. And so I just took this piece of, this is um, a watercolor, a piece of watercolor paper that I had used for another project that I had coffee dyed. And I thought it would be fun to add it right to the middle of this piece here um, so that you could put your list on there if you wanted to. So what we're going to do is we're going to build these inside pieces once again before we attach anything. So I'm going to start with this piece since I kind of know what I'm going to do with it. First thing I'm going to do is now 
this, I mean, this was just an off cut, which is why it's the size that it is. And I'm just going to go with it. You could certainly cut down any other piece of paper, you know, to be any size that you want. Or if you wanted to, you could just cut a piece of paper for the bottom piece that would be a place for your list. But I wanted to kind of have two layers to once again, add some stability. This is nice and thick watercolor paper, which I think will add some really good stability to my flap. Um, and that's why I'm choosing to do this. I also love my coffee splatters, which is why I'm going to leave them in here. Now, what I'm planning to do since this by default sort of has, it looks like maybe a quarter of an inch gap on either side of this, I'm going to just um, cut it down to be a quarter of an inch from the top and the bottom as well. So I'm just going to eyeball this once again. I'm not going to measure and I'm just going to make a cut right there so that this will go inside. I keep grabbing the wrong thing down here. Okay, so when we cut this off, this should fit nicely in here. And I like how um, you'll see some of the greens sticking out to out of the sides there. I think that's fun. So when I go to finish this off, I'm going to first sew around this one, and then I'll just tack glue it down to this paper, and then I'll sew around the outside. So um, I could even, maybe, maybe I will do that to make it a little bit easier. Maybe I'll tack it down first, and then I'll sew around this and sew around that. I'm not sure. Either way, both of these pieces of paper will have a zigzag stitch around them. That is my plan. All right, we'll put that to the side there. Okay, so now for my middle piece here, I want to do just two um, sort of stacked pockets. And I found some pieces of paper that I thought would be fun for that. And I like this one because you can kind of see it says Christmas carols here. And so that's why I thought I would use that one as um, kind of my starting point. Now I will have to cut these down so that they're the right size and that they are the right width. Since I know this is the right width, I'll be using that as my measuring tool. But um, this is going to be my lower pocket because I thought that having the two reds close to each other might be too much. And then I also like this one. So this is um, kind of a obviously a lighter page. So I thought that having these two um, back to back or on top of each other, I should say, would give me some contrast in between everything here. So that is my plan. And since I sort of have them lined up here, I just want to be sure that I have kind of the sizes that I want. So what I'm going to do might be easier to kind of take this off and move these out of the way for now so that we can see what we're doing here. I'm just going to move those out of the way. Okay, so this is my back piece where everything has to match. So this is my first pocket, and I have to decide how high I want this one. I want this one pretty high so that you could fit longer um, things into the back there. Um, but I don't want to cover up the whole thing, obviously. So I'm just going to eyeball where I want this. So this is looks like it's a little bit more than halfway, maybe. So I'm going to move that down just a little I don't know, it's probably gonna be about halfway. I'm not gonna measure, but I am going to lose my pencil. Okay, wait. <laughs> so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna cut it at the bottom or I'm gonna mark it at the bottom so I know how long this piece needs to be because that's the size of the first pocket that I want to be. And then I'm going to line up these two edges on this paper. Make sure they're nice and aligned, I think. And then I'm going to mark how wide it needs to be. Okay, so there's my first one. And then I'm going to just hold it there as so that I can kind of mark this second one as well. So now this is going to be a little bit harder. Nah, mm -hmm. I'm trying to think if I want to do it from this side so that it's more even, which I think I probably do. So let me do this. I'm going <laughs> to line this paper up on this side and mark where the edge needs to be. And boy, that's almost maybe a little bit in from the edge of that book there, book cover. And then here I want to measure how high it should be. And I need to see how far this one is up. So I'm just kind of moving that over to the side so I can see where that is going. 
And then I'm going to decide, okay, how much do I want of my little holly showing here? But it, do I still have enough of a pocket for it to be useful? So this looks like it's about two to two and a half inches, and I think that'll work. And that gives me a nice, um, nice show of the holly there. So I'm just going to mark that on the edge as well. Okay, so now I can cut these down based on all those marks that I did. So first I'm just going to cut this off over here, and then I'm going to cut it down to size right here. We're just going to come in just a scooch. So that's one of my pockets, and then I'm going to do the same thing over here. I think I'm going to cut this down first so that if I want to use this paper for something else, hopefully I won't be cutting off too much of that. I can use that for something else. And then this one will cut down there. And now my pockets should be nicely stacked and they should be fitting. They're pretty close. This, uh, Book at the bottom is just a little bit short, but when I sew, you won't even notice that. So I think for this one, I'm gonna grab my half inch hole punch and I'm gonna make a hole. Now I'm not gonna do this one because I don't think I want to cut off some of the Christmas, although I, I could probably do it if I just did a very shallow cut. Let me see if I can get this about in the middle. I'm just, I am going to mark this so that I can um, get my cut right here. And so I'm going to do, most of the time when I would do something like this, I would do them at the same time. Actually, maybe that's what I'll do. So I know I don't want to cut into this Christmas too much, so I'm going to do a shallow cut. And then if we want to make the other one a little bit um deeper we can do that but all I've done then is I've lined up the tops of my pockets now and then I'm going to take my hole punch with my since I know I don't want to cut out too much of that I'm going to hold that there so I can see what I'm doing and then I'm just going to do a very shallow punch here I'm probably going to cut into it a little bit but that's okay and I used that mark to kind of see what I was doing so I did cut into the Christmas a little bit and that's all right so, but now at least my hole punches match. They they don't look, they won't look off. But I do think what I'm going to do is just on the, the top pocket, I'm gonna make this one a little bit deeper. So I'm gonna try and line that up as best I can. So I need to kind of turn it towards me for just a minute. And then ooh, hopefully, so that's a little bit deeper now, but it's in the, the same spot, which is what I want. So now I like to add the little thumb notches because it helps you see that there's actually a pocket there. And this one's kind of hard to see because they're, the berries are right behind it, but that's okay. All right, so for this one, then I'm just gonna tell you what I'm gonna do with the sewing um, so that, because I, I do that off, um, off screen, I'm going to first sew across each pocket separately. So I'll sew across the top there, I'll sew across the top there, and then once I have that done, I will take all three pieces and sew all the way around the edge so that they're all connected together. And I do that so that I can still have some nice sewing on the top um, of these pockets. All right, so that is our middle piece. So I'm gonna put that over here. And then our last piece, I'm gonna grab that from here. We're going to do a little pocket on this side. All right, for the left flap on the inside, I just grabbed this little scrap that was also an off cut, but I love it because it matches um, this paper here. And I thought that would be fun to do a little tuck spot on here. So what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to first, this is the perfect height. Um, you could do it higher if you wanted to. And I kind of want to do this as a, um, I'm not even sure what you would, like an asymmetrical tuck spot or something. I'm not sure. 
I don't want it to go all the way to the end is what I'm trying to say so that you can easily tuck things in there. So I'm going to line this up on the left hand side because that's where I want it to start. And then I'm going to mark maybe three quarters of an inch to an inch over here. So we're going to cut this down right here. But then I'm also like, I don't want it to go completely diagonal because a lot of my decoration then would be missing. It would be gone. So I'm just going to pick a point and maybe I'm going to try to pick so that I don't cut off too much of my decoration. I'm going to pick a point over here. So it's going to be a little bit diagonal there. So let me kind of show you what I mean. And I might have to change this. I'm not sure it's going to be quite, I mean, there's no exact science to this. <laughs> so what I'm going to do with this piece where I have the two marks, I'm going to line them up on my cut line as best I can here. And let's see, I'm just, I, I'm actually adjusting this as I'm looking at what is left and we'll see how that, how that looks. So... I'm holding it down and this is my, this is going to be the piece that I'm going to use for my tuck spot. Now, because this corner is rounded on the bottom, I do need to do the same thing for this one so that they match. Like that. And then you can see now I have this little um, shape that makes it easy to, you know, tuck something in there. So that was kind of my goal for that one. And I really like the way that that looks. I am going to try to see if I can um, maybe round this corner a little bit and that corner. So let me see. Actually, I think I'm going to leave this one straight, but I am going to try and round this one a little bit. And to do that, I'm going to try to find a piece that's already rounded. I could actually just use this if I wanted to, I think. And I'm going to line this up. Kind of with the top. And we'll see if it does anything. It doesn't look like I'm taking off that much here. <laughs> I'm just kind of copying the, the rounded edge of that other piece. And then cutting it down just to give it so it doesn't have a, a point on there. So there you go. I think that looks great. Whoops, that's upside down. Okay, so there's my tuck spot for this side. And then to sew this one, just so you know how I'm going to do it, I'm first gonna sew this edge all the way down here. So across here and then down here, because that's my open edge. You always wanna sew your open edges first before you put your tuck spots or pockets together. And then after I sew that edge there, I'm going to put this together and then I will sew around the whole thing so that it's ready to go in there too. All right, so I'm going to go do all of that and we'll be back to start putting in the signatures. All right, our insides now are ready to go too. So you can see I have my flap ready to go and I did end up stitching that to the paper, the flap, um, the inside piece. I stitched that down first to this background paper and then I stitched around the whole thing. So that worked out just fine. You can see I have my two pockets here ready to go for my inside piece. And then I have my little tuck spot over here with my happy Christmas right there. And now we can move on to getting our signature together and finishing up the cover piece and putting it all together. All right, we need to, to work on the signature that goes inside our Christmas list folio. And before I show you the pages and, and put that all together, I just wanted to offer up this little freebie for you. So whenever I'm making something just for myself, I often like to offer it as a freebie for you as well. So that's what I'm doing for this. So this is just a little freebie for you if you're going to make um, a Christmas list folio like this that you could use for yours. So I wanted to have some signature pages that have some lines on there. You can kind of see them. And I kind of wanted it to be something that would sort of match my... Um, my Holly and Ivy kit that I used for the cover and things like that. So I tried to get some of the same colors in there, use some of the little snow that you see around just to kind of have it match up a little bit. But this is uh, the freebie is four pages of different lined papers that you can see here. So I have some that are 
kind of this beige color here. And then this one's a little bit more browny or yellow. So there's four papers that you can use for your signature, which I'm going to use. And then I also created for just totally blank pages so that you could print them double-sided and use them in your in your journal. So if you would like to grab this freebie, you can go to madpapercrush.com forward slash Christmas list, all one word, and you can grab this and use this for a Christmas list folio or other junk journal projects that you might be working on. So thank you so much for coming here and doing projects with me and watching my videos. I so appreciate every single one of you. I would love to chat with you in the comments. So if you leave those below, I can get to know you. All right, so that, go ahead and grab these, um, this freebie if you would like. I'm gonna cut them down and use them for my signature, and then I'm gonna add in a couple more pages that I will show you in just a minute. Okay, so along with my freebie papers that I'm gonna be using in my signature, I wanted to add a couple of extra things in as well. Um, so one of the things I grabbed was, this is, um, this is actually an Edith Holden book page um, that I had. So um, I picked out the one that said mistletoe, but this one is really short. So I may add something to this to make it a little bit longer. And then I also grabbed one, another full page from the Holly and Ivy kit. And I thought I would use this as well because I often like to put a heavier piece of paper on the outside of my signatures. And so I thought that would work well in this case. And plus this would kind of also pull everything together um, throughout, the, throughout the book. And then I also pulled out this um, piece of ledger paper an old ledger paper back from 1871 that I just absolutely love the writing and stuff on. But because it's not very Christmassy, I also grabbed um, my Christmas Bounty freebie. So this is a freebie that I had done in collaboration with Michelle from Tape and Twine. She does amazing clay work. And I put together these um, sort of medallions and things so that you could actually make clay ornaments using these graphics. So if you would like the freebie, you can get that at madpapercrush.com forward slash Christmas bounty, all one word. And when you go to that page, there's also a link to Michelle's YouTube channel where she shows you how to make ornaments from this freebie. So I'm not going to be using them as ornaments today. I'm just going to be, I thought I would maybe cut out a couple that I could use as decoration on my ledger page since um, it's not very Christmassy. And then the other thing that I did was I cut out, so the um, freebie pages, excuse me, freebie pages, boy, say that three times fast, for the Christmas folio, I had put these little, just little clusters of Christmas botanicals on the sides of the page. And so I cut one out because I thought that would be fun to add somewhere as well. Um, I may cut out another one. I don't know exactly yet. So, um, so that's kind of where I'm starting. I also kind of pulled out, now this is from the Christmas Bounty kit that I have for sale in my Etsy shop. Um, I was thinking maybe it might be fun to do a corner page on um, the ledger page as well. I'm not sure that I'm going to do that, but this is where I'm starting with these decorations. So I'm going to move this out of the way since this stuff is um, stuff that's not cut out. And I'm just going to kind of tell you what I'm going to do with some of it. So, so since these are very um, on a bright white background there, I'm just going to grab some... Uh, some of my vintage photo distress ink, and I'm gonna kinda old these up. I'm gonna distress them all here so that they, they won't be so shocking, <laughs> shockingly white on my ledger paper, but they'll add a nice um, Christmassy look to them. So I'm just going to do that with all three of these pieces. And then if there's any others that I decide to put on, this is the same technique that I'm going, you know, to use for them just to make them a little bit look like they're older than they actually are. So there's those three like that. And then for my signature pages that I have in the freebie. Now I know that my folio, let me just grab this real quick. 
my folio, we're going to put the signature right here. So I know that my pages need to be about eight inches wide um, so that when I fold them in half, they'll be four inches wide and eight and a half inches tall. So that's what these have been designed at. And then you can fold them, you know, any way you like. So if you like one side better than the other, you know, you can fold that towards the outside. I tried to do this so that um, some of the flowers would be on the bottom and some would be on the top. But if, you know, I, I don't think that it, it has really a right side up and an upside down for most of these. So if you like one way better than another, you can always, um, you know, keep them all right side up if you want or have them one upside down, one, one right side up like I'm doing. So let's see. Now that was a low one. So maybe I'll fold this one this way. And then we'll put this one on the outside. Okay, so there's four of my pages and I'll put them in order once I get everything done here. Um, let me do this page next. So what I wanted to do is I thought this would be a nice outside page and I kind of like the um, sleighs and carriages advertisement. So I think, I don't wanna cut that off if I can help it. I, it is gonna be folded, but that's okay. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to mark this since this is on cardstock, I'm going to mark this at four inches from the left hand side because this is the page that or the part that I want to be on the front side, if that makes sense. So I think seven inches would be four. One, two, three, four. Yes. <laughs> okay, so most of my advertisement is going to show, which is nice. Christmas Carol gets cut, cut off a little bit there, but that's okay. So when I fold that, now I have this whole extra side. And I didn't want to just cut this off here because I didn't want to, you know, cut the kids in half <laughs> here. So I thought this would be fun to just leave it as a flap so that I could come back and, and look at it if I wanted to. So I could either make my fold at four inches, but I may even come in a little bit more just so it's not to the edge, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna maybe put my fold at, uh, either way, I think I'm gonna be going over her face and I don't want it to go too far in, but let's see how many, uh, let's see, this is, if I go three and a half, oh, three and a half will put me right on the edge there. So I may have to cut off a little bit of this to make this work the way I want to. So I'm gonna cut off maybe a half an inch from this side. And maybe we can go to three quarters because I don't mind if part of the picture is cut off. I just don't want to, I just don't want to cut the children off. So let's see if this will work better. Okay, so now, yeah, this will work. I think this is going to work, work much better. So if I put this, my fold, now at three and a half, I'm gonna have less to fold over. So I think that's gonna work. Oops. Okay, so my crease is gonna be just right on the edge there. And I'm not sure which way I want this yet. I mean, I, it might be a flap this way or this way. This might be fun to leave it this way because then this could be like a little hidden journaling spot here. There's some blank parts here that you could journal on. So I think I kind of like it that way. All right, so this is what I'm thinking for this. This will be here. And these are gonna somehow go inside. So this will be the outside of my, um, my signature. And I have to put these in order yet, I haven't done that. But I'm gonna get the rest of the pages ready before I do that. Okay, so now for this one, for my ledger page, I'm gonna do the same thing. I have to, to fold it at a certain point. Um, I think what I might do is, because I like this part, I like this handwriting the best on the left-hand side here. I think I'll fold it the same way. So I wanna do four inches, but I want this to come from the left. Maybe instead of creasing this, I, I'm afraid if I try to make a mark in this, it might tear it. So I'm just going to fold it, looking at it, just eyeballing it here. 
to get it to four inches so that hopefully I don't tear it too bad. And then this one, I'll just fold back on itself as well so that we have it. And now this one, it's a little bit shorter than my other pages. So this one's about eight inches. Um, all my other pages are eight and a half. So now I just have to decide where I kind of want some of my Christmassy things here. So I'm just gonna, and actually now that I've folded that, I can see that my corner here probably isn't gonna work too well. I'd have to cut it down, which I could certainly do if I wanted to, but um, I think I'm going to hold off on that. And then this, I might just put kind of right down the middle of one of these sides. Yeah, I'm gonna leave that open maybe. All right, I'm going to just do some, <laughs> do some finagling with this and decide where I want it. And then we'll glue those down just with uh, probably either my glue stick here or my three-in-one glue. I'm not sure which one yet. And then the next thing I wanna do is this page. All right, I grabbed another scrap from the Holly and Ivy kit here. And I, since this page measures six inches, I need another two inches to make this a full size page. So I cut this strip down to two and a half inches so that I could overlap them a half an inch. Um, and then I would have a full size, full eight inch page, if that makes sense. So then what I'm gonna do for this to actually attach them is I'm going to just put down just a little bit of glue right on the edge, not much, because I just wanna hold this in place. So now I am gonna line this up so that I get this a half an inch over here like that. Okay, so I have this just sort of tacked down here and then I'm gonna take it over to my sewing machine and I'm just gonna do a little stitch, a little maybe crazy stitch right up here to um, hold these two together. And then we'll fold it and my four inches will be, um, let's see, about right, one, two, three, four, about right here. So that'll be a nice um, two page fold there. So let me go do that and I'll be right back. Okay, these two pages are done. So I'm just gonna show you what I did there. You can see I did a little, little crazy stitch on here to make this one page and folded it in half so that it's four by eight and a half, which is what we wanted. And then this one, we had already folded it, but I just added some, I added a little fabric washi tape here. I added some of the medallion and a couple of stickers just to just to give it a little bit more of a Christmassy feel. Um, obviously, I'm not gonna write on this page, but I love having pages like this in my journals as sort of inspiration and things um, because I love the look of vintage ledger and, you know, vintage illustrations. So that's kind of why I did this. All right. So now what I have to do is put these in order. And I don't want this signature to become too thick because um, if you remember on our base piece, um, we only have a little bit folded over. So we only have like an eighth of an inch. So I mean, it can get a little bulky, but I don't want it to go crazy. That's, that's what I don't want to do. <laughs> All right. So I know this paper is going to be the outside of my signature. Then I just have to put the rest of them together on the inside. So let's see how I'm going to do this. Actually having something like that might be fun. And then maybe I can put my ledger paper in there. And then I can put maybe these together and then put my Edith Holden in the middle. I think I like that because then as I'm flipping through, I'll sort of have some matching pages next to each other and plain pages next to busy pages. And then um, I could certainly write on this if I wanted to. There's lots of um, clear spaces there if I wanted to. So I'm just going to do a quick flip through, make sure I like the way this whole thing looks. And then we'll slide it into the outside part of the signature. And we'll make sure it fits. So this is 
what we're going to be doing in the signature. And I think this is going to work great. So it is a little bit thicker maybe than I might want it to be. We could maybe remove, I'm going to take the outside page off. And then let's see, maybe instead of that, I'm just trying to make sure it's not going to be too thick to go over here. Oh, and the other thing that I want to do, I could cut these down a little, which this one's, I could cut that down. I think that might be what I'm going to do because I don't mind if it's um, a little bit thicker and I do really love this page, so I don't think I wanna take it out. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm going to cut down all of these pages a little bit so that they are more inside here. So right now, because when you um, sandwich papers like this, the inside pages start to stick out more on the end, I'm just gonna cut off some of those pages. So I'm gonna do it one at a time so I don't like cut off a flap or something, um, especially because I have this this one here. I don't wanna cut that end off because that'll remove my flap. So I am gonna do it one at a time, but I'm gonna kinda keep them in order so I know what I'm doing here. And I'm basically just gonna take off whatever I think um, would be helpful. So this one, I don't really wanna cut off the word there and I don't wanna cut off this advertisement too much either. So I'm just gonna try to cut off a little bit. And that seems to work. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for each of these pages. Now for this one, I'm gonna cut these together. But same thing, I'm just gonna try to take off a little bit so that it's a little bit smaller. And I think that's, that's gonna be okay there. And then now I can do, I'm gonna do these two together because they are just those um, freebie papers that I have. And, whoops, got all kinds of stuff hanging out in my, ooh. Sometimes it's easier to start from the inside of your paper. I'll put those in there. This one, ooh, now, hmm, I might not be able to cut this down because I added some fabric washi here, or if I do, I might have to use scissors to do that. So I'm gonna hold off on that one. We'll see if it fits in there okay. Um, but I am going to do the same thing I did for my other two freebie papers here with this one. And this is the most inside one, so I may try to take the most off of here that I can. All right, and let's see now, if I put this in here. Okay, I do see that my ledger page is sticking out a little bit, but I think this is gonna work much better. It is, it is. Okay, now before we sew this in, the one thing that I wanna do is I do wanna go through and I'm gonna round all the corners of my um, exposed signature pages um, for no other reason except to make it decorative. <laughs> so I'm just gonna take each one, I'm gonna use the same uh, curve, corner round that I had done for the outsides. And I'm just gonna do that for each. I'm not gonna do it on this fold, but for anything that is um, just exposed here, I'm gonna go through and do all four of these. Actually, I might be able to do these since they should match up. I can do them together. And then once again, we'll be putting them back together the way that we had them. Okay, I have my signature all sewn in and I did sew it in so that the knot and the ends are on the outside. 
So if you have questions about doing a three hole pamphlet stitch, I will link that video on how to do that down below um, so that you can do that. I didn't measure where the holes went. I just kind of eyeballed it. I tried to bring the ends in far enough to be sure that I got my ledger page um, in there. I didn't want to, you know, be up on the edge, although, you know, I could have gone a little further out if I wanted to, but I, this is perfect, I think. And now I pulled out some other things to kind of pull this all together. So we had waited to put any of our outside cover pieces on because I wanted to show you something that I'm planning to do. So the first thing is I wanted to sew this signature in first so that I could take um, just a scrap piece of fabric and cover this up. And the reason I want to do that is to just add some strength to this fold since I have my thread in there and I'll be opening it and doing all kinds of things with it. I want to be sure that this thread and this fold is protected and having a piece of fabric on there will do that. So I just kind of tore down a piece of fabric that was about an inch wide and the height of my folio here, so eight and a half inches tall. And actually I have two of them because the other place that I would like to reinforce is this inside um, piece here. So it is, you know, um, it has two folds on it, but I'm still going to reinforce it because, especially because of this little bit of a hole that I have going on. So I'm probably, I was thinking I would do this on the inside here, but I'm just going to take a look and see how I like that before I make a decision there. Yeah, I think that'll work. And then the outside will be plain, but I could do this on the outside as well. Um, and maybe since I'm doing one on the outside, maybe it makes sense to do them both just on the outside here. So what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to take my Fabri-Tac here and I'm just going to glue down these two pieces over top of my folds. And I'm going to make sure like for um, this one that I have my ends underneath there and they're all, you know, inside there. Now, if you've ever glued fabric with this uh, Fabri-Tac or 3-in-1 glue here by Beacon, I always just make sure that once I put my glue on, I just rub it down with my finger so that um, the glue doesn't seep through the fabric and show. So I'm just going to try to get the glue on here and then we'll get that glued down. I let these dry a little bit and then there's one more thing that we're going to do before we put our cover pieces on and what I did was I pulled out some sari ribbon that has some reds and some greens in it and I think that these this matches um, the papers that I'm using pretty well because I want to have a closure on here I mean this is my Christmas list and I don't want people peeking at it <laughs> too much so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this sari ribbon and I'm just going to um, tie this up so that I can see how long of a piece I need. Um, since I want to try not to waste it too much, I'm going to try to measure it based on it being um, tied. So I'm just going to do this and let's see, I can probably, so, you know, watch me struggle here. Whoops. Oops, oops, oops. I want to keep this side a little bit shorter. Here we go. Let's see if that works a little bit. Can be even shorter probably. So we can probably take off maybe two inches for my total. So if I hold it at this end and then I come in maybe two inches or so. I think that's about how long I want it to be. Actually, look, it's almost in half. Maybe what I'll do is I'll just cut it in half since that uh, 
should work here. And I'm going to see if I can tear this. Because a torn edge is always my favorite, but it doesn't look like this is going to tear too well for me. I know if it's tearing lengthwise. <laughs> so we'll just cut it. <laughs> All right, now I'm just going to make sure that this one fits around and does what I want it to do. Now, here's the other reason why we didn't put the cover pieces on yet, because I want to take this and I'm going to find just about the center here. I want to take this and glue it to the very back of our folio so that when we put our back piece on, it will hold our closure in place. So let me just kind of, I don't know if I explained that real well. So this is our folded folio and this is the back and maybe I'll leave it like this. It might work a little bit better. And then I'm going to find the middle of the sari ribbon that we had pulled or so whatever closure you're using, find about the middle and we're going to glue it down to the middle here. So I'm just gonna hold that like that for a moment until I get some glue on here. And I'm gonna try to do this uh, about in the middle. So this is eight and a half. So we wanna do about one, two, three, four and a quarter. So about here. And I'm just gonna mark this. And I'm gonna try to flatten out the sari ribbon so that it doesn't make a big lump underneath of our paper. So this is about the middle. And I'm just gonna flatten it out here. It'll scrunch back up when it comes out of the back, but I think this will be good, just like that. And I probably should do this because it looks like <laughs> I didn't get it quite straight. All right, I think that looks pretty good. And now that we have this on, we can actually start putting our cover pieces on. So this is my back cover and I'm just going to center it in between my two pieces, my two ends here. And I have my sorry ribbon nice and flat, so that'll hold on. And then I'm just going to go through and glue all of my pieces on. So uh, once again, I'm gonna be using my Beacon 3-in-1 glue here, and I'm gonna be pretty generous with this glue as I go around to everything that I'm putting on. All right, I have all of my cover pieces glued on, and I did give it some time to dry, so it's been overnight. But you can see I have my front piece on here, I have all of the um, outside cover pieces on and our sari is nice and covered up there, but it, it's going to be held in nice and tight by the glue that's underneath there. And then the inside pieces are all put in as well. And then what I did was just to kind of finish it up because I can't, I have a hard time just leaving it blank, you know. I went ahead and made some ephemera to go in it to get things started. So I could put some lists on here. Um, I could, you know, write some reminders on here. You know, you can use these for whatever you think might be necessary when you're creating a wish list, a Christmas gift list. <laughs> um, so these two, so this one, I did put some pieces on from my photo booth kit. I just thought they were fun and it looks like these people are very joyful and that is what you need to be doing at Christmas time, being joyful. And so I have a little tag in the back and the front here. And then I also, this is another from the photo booth. I made one for the front for this little tuck spot here. And then I used one of the envelopes from the Holly and Ivy kit. And I just cut this um, this little postcard out of one of the pages to, to put right in there. And I thought that was really fun. So these two, I thought I would just tuck right into here. And you can see, I love these um, these ladies here are kind of look like you know friends maybe maybe they're heading out shopping together or something like that i just thought that was another fun look for this and then once it's done you can tie it all up and this is 
a Christmas list folio. And I think this would fit perfectly in a purse or a little bag so that you have it with you whenever you need to jot something down or pick something up. Um, and I hope this will help you plan your Christmas. I think this is a fun thing, maybe even to just record some memories and things as well. So that's it, our Christmas list folio. Don't forget, you can get your freebies at madpapercrush.com forward slash Christmas list for the pages and the trims that you saw there. And then also, if you're interested in the Christmas bounty freebie, you can get that at madpapercrush.com forward slash Christmas bounty. All right. I hope that you enjoyed this video, fr friends. I had so much fun making it. I am really looking forward to the Christmas season and I will see you in the next video. Take care, friends. Bye-bye.